Hey guys, sorry I'm running late. I'm always late. <laughs> Just get it together. Um, give me two seconds, guys. I am still trying to make sure that my stuff is where it needs to be because I was having issues with Twitch. Um, and I don't know why. Um, getting my life together and for some odd reason one of my videos is not like popping up so that is a thing as well so yeah that is a thing as well shit happens and I'm not a happy camper about it that it is happening all right Alrighty. All right, we're in a whole new area today. We have blue light ascending. Hi, how are you guys doing? We're gonna be up close and personal today um, because that's just how we're gonna work out. So first and foremost, Hello guys, how you doing? What's good? My name is Lady Reiku, um, your friendly neighborhood witch. It is that time again. It is podcast day and we're going to be talking about coping mechanisms. We're going to be talking about different things involving mental health and how do you deal with coping with anxiety, with depression, stress, things of that nature. Um, because honestly, the subject is, um, going to hit home a little bit for me because I have been neglecting my stress, my anxiety, my depression the last few weeks. And guess what guys? I fumbled. Uh, I straight up fumbled. There's no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, I actually dealt with a lot of stuff in the last couple weeks. Um, so we're going to talk about coping mechanisms and we're going to talk about some of the unhealthy coping mechanisms, the most common unhealthy coping mechanisms, as well as some of the more common ones. Um, so that's what we're basically here for today. And if you are coming here to think that you are going to, you know, talk to me on a whole, hey, let me, let me holla at you. Let me see what it is. If you're not bringing you know, substance to the conversation, unfortunately, we are going to have to disregard your comment, Terry's. Sorry, guys. So, coping mechanisms, aka coping strategies. Let's talk about it a little bit. So, if you guys are not aware what coping mechanisms is, it is the voluntary and involuntary response or the body's response to stress. Um, most people see coping mechanisms in the unhealthy light where it's a person who is instead of dealing with problems they're laughing they're sharing a lot of memes they go to a lot of parties um they're constantly drinking they're not dealing with their mental health properly uh it's certain mm -hmm. things that people do that they're not aware of that is technically considered unhealthy coping mechanisms um in dealing with emotional stress um nervous laughter things of that nature um is another common one that a lot of people don't realize but dealing with stressful people dealing with stressful situations, anxiety, depression, things of that nature. Hi, thank you so much for the follow, Logan. I love you so much. Um, a lot of people don't realize that with coping mechanisms, it gets, it gets a little tricky. Are you dealing with your coping in the proper way? And I can tell you, I am the number one prime offender when it comes to dealing with my um my different you know stresses and my anxiety i have escapism um escapism <laughs> i have escapism and escapism is not a healthy 
healthy thing. Escapism is where you use other things to deal with, avoid dealing with your stress. Um, escapism comes in different forms. It's, it's my form of coping with things. I will overwork. I will, you know, indulge in sex, um, with partners or ex-partners. I will, you know, anything to get me out of that moment. Um, I will play video games and sometimes video games is not enough. Um, sometimes, you know, smoking is not enough and things of that nature. But it's like you try to use things to escape the reality of what's going on in your life. And it's just like with coping skills or coping strategies, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people do them subconsciously because again, with coping mechanisms it is something that is very very subconscious um emotional focus uh coping skills could come from a lot of a lot of different things a lot of people don't realize that they could be dealing with coping mechanisms and it's the most unhealthy ones um sometimes when it comes down to coping mechanisms you got to know the difference between is it problem based is it emotional based is it psychological based what kind of base is coping uh for you that you're dealing with are you dealing with the stress on a physical level are you dealing with stress on a mental or emotional level like what are you possibly doing a lot of people don't realize that coping mechanisms is just like i said an auto response to dealing with certain things um i always tell people it's usually the ones who the strong friends the ones who are laughing a lot um the ones who do like the nervous laughter things of that nature um it's, it's usually the ones who have the most escapism or the worst coping mechanisms because they're not really dealing with the situation at that time. Um, and sometimes it's not even just being unhealthy. Some of them are actually very destructive. Some of them are, you know, I guess the best example to start off to say with unhealthy coping mechanisms, think back to high school. If you were a bully or if you were bullied, the person who was usually doing the bullying was, that was their way of dealing with whatever was going on in their life. Um, and that in a way is still a form of a coping mechanism or a coping strategy. Um, and it's, it's literally with unhealthy coping, it's a fast relief for a long-term issue. Um, so a lot of people, when they're thinking about coping mechanisms and what are the healthy and unhealthy um, coping mechanisms, they don't realize that when they're doing these things that it's healthy for, it's ha it makes them happy in the moment. It's instant gratification. And that's the reason why like when I tell people like mine for me is like sex um, and you know, I rather, not feel the pain that I'm feeling. So I rather have sex with somebody. And usually I, I, I pick somebody I've had sex with before or somebody I'm willing to have sex with and, or I will smoke if I don't have somebody that I'm engaged with sexually at that time. Um, so I'm not out here saying that, yeah, no, I'm a hoe every time I have a bad moment or I just kind of seclude myself off. Um, people who drink a lot, people who gamble, people who take drugs, people who smoke, a lot of those are coping mechanisms or coping strategies. Um, it's helping in that moment. It's giving that thrill in the moment, but it's not long-term helping this person. It's not helping them get through that passing, um, long-term effects because, we're looking for instant gratification. So a lot of us who have these unhealthy me like coping mechanisms or strategies, we're looking for that instant gratification. So a lot of us will be like, oh, I had a stressful day Ugh, at work or whatever. And then we go home and smoke. And then we're feeling good at that moment. But then the next day we have to go back to this dead end job that we don't like. Um, or people who go gambling, like these people who are at the slot machines, just sitting here and they're living for the thrill. Um, that is a form of coping. That is a form of dealing with it. People who have um, shopping problems, like people who like sit here and they are shopaholics. Those, those thrills of buying things that they want is a form of a coping mechanism because in the moment it makes them happy. They feel like 
spending money or doing these things or these activities in the moment is going to make them happy, but it's not a long-term um, solution to what is going on for them. A lot of people don't realize that with coping mechanisms and different, you know, coping styles, you have to realize it's, it's a, it's a coping, it's a, let me scratch and restart that statement. With a coping mechanism or behavior, it is something that you engage with to try to isolate or protect oneself from psychological damage, emotional damage, or physical damage. And it could be either good, it can be bad, you all, you can, it could be healthy or unhealthy. Um, and people may look at gambling as an unhealthy one. Yes, it is unhealthy because it can be very destructive to your pocket and it could add more to your stress. You might be gambling because you think that might be the win to get you out of, you know, money debt. In all actuality, it might not even be the end all solution. Or you sit here and you shop because you feel like you don't buy things for yourself, but then in turn, make yourself more depressed because now you don't have money and that's just it. You're like, now I got to pay bills and I don't have the money to pay these bills. Um... Coping mechanisms is not like going to resolve the issue ultimately. It is very short term. It's a burst of energy. Think of like manic and depre like manic and panic like moments. It's like in the moment you're feeling happy, you have a lot of energy, you're, you're happy about this. And then in the long term, it comes back and once the, the high settles down, you're still depressed, you're still stressed, you're still having anxiety. And it, it's just like, this is what people automatically do to deal with stress-induced situations. Now, some of the common ones that most people are familiarized with for unhealthy, you know, coping strategies, aka coping mechanisms, um, alcoholism. Most people don't realize that a lot of people who drink alcohol, that is their coping mechanism. That is what they do to deal with stress. They're not really escaping, you know, the situation itself. You're, you're thinking that escaping in the bottom of the bottle and that's what drives them to go into there because when they come down from the alcohol high, they're still having to deal with it. So they feel like if I keep drinking alcohol, eventually it'll just figure itself out, but it never figures itself out. So a lot of people who are alcoholics, they deal with a lot of that stuff and this is where they're um, drinking a lot more, like not like, Oh, they're drinking at every social events. These are those people that you tell them to stop drinking, but they're drinking at three o'clock in the morning or they're drinking right before work or they're, they're drinking in between on breaks like that. We're not talking like those social acceptable occasions where they're having one or two glasses of wine before they go home and be cuddled up with their boo. We're talking like excessive amounts where these people are being very disruptive in clubs. The, a lot of those people tend to be, um, a little bit more out there and uh, uh, dealing with their stress in an unhealthy way. Um, another thing is drug abuse. And I don't mean like people who deal with weed or, you know, marijuana. I'm talking more of people who are dealing with like Coke, um, drinking to get through a rough day. Yeah, those are those people that is considered alcohols, uh, alcoholics. So another unhealthy more common one because a lot of people will say weed is up there yes weed is a form of bad coping but if you use it sparingly and properly while still like let me use me as an example I don't like using weed as a bad coping mechanism because the way I use my weed intake and how I use my you know regular stuff I smoke weed to help me go through the motions so for me I'm doing a lot of the healthy coping strategies which I'm going to come back into that I do a lot of the healthy coping strategies but I use weed as a way to tone down my anxiety I don't use it as a I'm abusing it because there's a difference between using it sparingly and then abusing the substance Versus like you are literally to the point you're crippling, you can't function without it. Like I'm talking like that kind of stuff. You are, um, rather than using it for isolated rec um, recreational purposes, um, 
you're you're like sitting here popping pills to numb the pain. You are um, doing you know Percocet because it makes you feel good and that's the only way you can feel. Like you actually can say that you you have an addiction at this point. And you're using it as a way of dealing with just the most minor inconveniencing things to get through the day. Like, that's what I mean by, like, drug abuse. And you're talking, like, heavy, heavy drugs that, you know, can do a very damaging long-term effect on you. Um, I am going to always be an advocate for weed. There's just no if, ands, or buts about it. I'm sorry. So I, I can't sit here and be like, no, don't smoke weed, kids. Um, that's just it. Like, I, I can tell you, I have a lot of unhealthy and healthy habits when it comes to coping um anger or aggressive behaviors um anger for a lot of people is it's like anger and aggressive behavior is normal um especially with a lot of different things but we're talking like those people who are more agitated those people who are potentially more destructive um damaging to relationships career physical health they're 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 more aggressively angry they are Um, pushing people away, fighting with people to push them away. These are people who are just kind of in fight or flight mode, um, which honestly, this is going to come up again in a later episode where we're talking about defense mechanisms um, because anger is also a sign of the defense mechanism is in a fight or flight kind of mood. But this is anger, just you, a person breathes in your direction and you're instantly mad at them and then you snap at them. Um, but these are like, I'm saying like people who are literally like you're sitting here wanting to beat up on people when you've never hit a person a day in your life. That's what I mean by like anger or aggressive behavior. Um, this is again, like one of the more common ones when people start seeing that, um, eating excessive junk food beyond the normal level of occasional indulgence. These are those people who are, you know, midnight snacking. And this is midnight snacking, not because you have like, uh, antidepressant that makes you midnight snack because I can say one of my antidepressants had me midnight snacking so I can't say that that was um bad coping it was just literally my stomach would wake me up at the same time every day talking about bitch if you don't go eat so that's the difference but these are like eating junk foods because food is the only thing that makes you happy and you're just eating and eating and eating to fill a void that's not there and, and the moment you're happy because you're eating all these foods and this junk food, but in the long run, then you're sitting here and you're disgusted with yourself and then you eat more food to try to make yourself feel better. Like, this is what I mean, like, overindulging in stuff that you like. Uh, gambling about beyond what's socially acceptable amounts of frequency. And what I mean, like, with gambling, everything is good sparingly. But these are people I'm talking like, you are over gambling. You are spending your life's hi, darling. You're spending your life's money on doing. You are literally spending every ounce of money. You're using your paycheck that you need to pay rent, or you're using your paycheck to buy diapers and stuff like that to gamble. Like those are uh, signs of unhealthy gambling addictions, and it's to the point where people are telling you to stop, and you're like, I can stop anytime you want. I want as you're sitting here still at the slot machine racking up debt to the bank like that is another sign of uh, a very bad coping mechanism um spending and overspending and over shopping beyond what's necessary to meet one personal needs and occasional indulgence so there's a difference between shopping and treating yourself and just spending money you literally got paid a paycheck and you're already in debt and i can say a lot of people during covid went into debt because of things like afterpay. They literally to the point where as soon as their paycheck came because they don't use afterpay on just about every fucking thing, is gone. And then they're wondering where their rent and their pay, their their like, you know, car note bills is and all that other stuff. They don't realize that 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 is what overindulging when it comes to over shopping and overspending because you're filling a void. You're not going outside, so you need to shop. You had all these outfits that you're not going to get to wear because, you know, the world's closed off. A lot of people show their signs of bad coping and overspending and over shopping uh, beyond personal needs during COVID. So uh, that is another common one. Um, what was the sh- What is the movie called? Confessions of a Shopaholic? She's one of them. That was her coping. She she overshopped. She didn't need half the stuff that she bought, but she she ended up buying like every fucking thing that, you know, spotted her eye and was great. Um 
another one trigger warning i'm sorry guys i I should have said this ahead of time is self-harm and i mean self-harm it can come in different ways it can be picking at scabs it can be you know cut you know sticking um sewing needles in your skin it could be you know self-inflict cutting things of that nature yes ma'am oh my goodness my sister called me while she was trying to call somebody else and she's on my live watching my live which i don't get how that works it it is how that is into who but when it comes down to when it comes down to self-harm i at one point in time did it i'm not going to sugarcoat that to anybody at one point in time i did um inflict self-harm and but a lot of people don't realize that i was in an environment where i was being harmed so i was used to being harmed Oh yeah, overeating and undereating is self-harm as well. It is. And I mean, it's about trying to find nutrients in a, a ground. But we'll talk more about that when it comes to um, examples of healthy coping me- strategies slash mechanisms. Self-harm comes in different forms. It can be, um, you know, some people don't brush their teeth. Some people, you know, pick at their teeth. Some people, you know, pull their hair out. People who sit here and... Uh, I will talk a little bit more on a little bit other coping mechanisms a lot of people don't know about. Excessive scratching. Um, I know with me, I fidget a lot when I'm nervous. So you guys see me talk with my hands. Um, it's me fidgeting because of anxiety. And I am, I'm not going to lie. I, I have extreme anxiety every podcast, no matter how long I've been doing this. But I talk with my hands so I keep from like scratching and itching because that's what I do when I'm in social anxiety mode. Um but self-harm comes in different ways. Um, people I used to know, they used to sit here. Um, one friend of mine, she used to scratch right here in this area, like in between her fingers as a way of dealing with anxiety. And she used to rub it so much that it was raw. And that's, it's a form of self-harm. Um, I had a friend who used to eat her hair. And she would pick hair in the center of her head, which I think that's also a disorder. But it's, um, she used to sit here and she used to pick hair and like eat it. And then after a while, she stopped eating her hair. She was just at that point, just pulling hair. Um, and it would be like one or two strands and stuff like that. But at one point in time, we started to really see her hair thin out. And, um, that was her way of, um, dealing with things, stress in her life. Um, console gaming. So, I know a lot of people who are on Twitch is going to be like, what do you mean console gaming? Um, console gaming or PC gaming and dealing with stuff, it's easier to deal with non-reality than it is to deal with reality. So, video games is a form of escapism. We can sit here and we can sit here and play every game in the book. We can sit here and engage and like lose ourselves in everything that is going on. And a lot of people don't realize that video games is the perfect way to escape. Um, some people play video games so much that they have died. Um, I've known that some people have played so much video games that they neglected eating because living in the fantasy world was a lot easier than living in the reality world, which a lot of people don't realize that that's actually not the best thing to do. Um, a lot of people fail to realize or to remember that, you know, they have to go out and eat, they have to go out and use the bathroom. There was a person who sat here and wore a diaper playing WoW, um, and literally lived off of Mountain Dew, which it, console gaming is one of those gateway bad strategy, like coping mechanisms that you're so engaged in the video game world that you will neglect eating healthy. You will neglect using the bathroom. You over snack, you under snack, you don't really eat healthy. Like when I was married to my ex-husband, when he would like get into his game modes, I used to sit here and have to feed him food. Like if I didn't give him food, he was not going to eat. Um, and that was his, his bad habit with me. On the other hand, I don't get lost in video games. The difference with me is like, with my social anxiety and stuff like that, when I was younger, video games was like my way of escaping. 
But then like as I've gotten older, my depression has gotten different. So now my depression's like I don't think I can sit here and play video games. I just kind of want to sleep. Um, smoking addiction, um, nicotine is another one. Oversleeping is another form of bad coping or coping strategies like oversleeping, undersleeping. Um, I used to sit here and oversleep. Yes, books can be good and bad. Getting lost in books can be good and bad. Um, honestly, reading turns around can actually be a healthy one, but if you overindulge in it, yes, it can be bad. Um, but for me, I used to oversleep. Like I used to just lay in the bed, which is another sign of depression, ladies and gents. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where like you are not taking care of yourself when it comes down to the different things in your life, your coping, everything else like that. Um, some people overindulge in sexual activities. Um, some people sit here and watch a lot of amounts of porn. Like there is literally, literally a lot of different bad coping things. I, um, when I used to work for the state hospital in Florida, I met a man who was not only depressed, he was a, a, I don't know how to explain it. He masturbated a lot. Um, that was his way of dealing with, um, his stress levels. He would literally, he got put in there because he would sit here and masturbate in public. And so they arrested him and they put him in the mental hospital. Like, that's just it. Like, that's straight up was his coping mechanism was watching a lot of porn and masturbating, which that is, you know, most people don't realize that that is a form of coping and a form of, um, you know, dealing with stress levels. Like, like I said, for me, mine's was having sex with partners that I probably should not have been hooking back up with. Like, I was like, I'm done with you. Why the fuck am I still fucking around with you? And then turn around and this is what we were doing. I'm like, oh, okay. So, you know, sex was a form. At that moment, I felt great, but this problem's still here. Um, weed is the same way. Like, you can sit here and you can smoke weed. In that moment, you feel good. You feel like you, you done got away from everything. But if you use it right, and like I said, I'm always gonna be an advocate for smoking. Uh, but if you use it right, if you sit here and you're using weed as a temporary solution while still dealing with healthy coping mechanisms, like with me, um, let's dive into helping help healthy coping strategies and mechanisms while I start this. Doing stuff that's like mindful relaxation and meditation, music therapy, writing in books, journals, um, reading, things of that nature. I'm one of those people when I get high, I want to draw. I want to write. I want to do something. I want to dance. I want to listen to music. So for me, weed helps me get into those better, healthy coping strategies versus me just sitting here and just like wanting to go to sleep or not deal with it or just get lost in my own thoughts. A lot of people don't realize that with with healthy strategies and healthy coping mechanisms, it's not going to be an instant gratification and we're looking for that instant gratification. So it's easier for us to go to these bad things and want to do these bad things versus, okay, maybe I should just go on a walk. Maybe I should stay active. Maybe I should, you know, have mindful relaxation and I should meditate. I should eat healthy snack mm -hmm. foods. Like, you know, you know, like, like fruit instead of like junk food. And the thing is like, for me, I personally, um, I have gotten into the habit of telling my sisters, especially when I used to like overeat in the middle of the night because of my medication is don't buy as much junk food, buy me fruit. Cause if you buy me fruit, I'm good. Um, another thing is a lot of people don't do is give themselves like permission to have a reasonable amount of downtime especially like strong friends we worry about everybody else that we don't give ourselves time to deal with our own stuff which a lot of people don't realize that with healthy coping mechanism and coping strategies it's okay to tell people no when you need time for yourself we have to take time to actually like figure ourselves out do the things that we need to do handle ourselves properly and if we're not handling ourselves properly of course we're going to end up falling down the lines of unhealthy coping mechanisms in that brief moment to make ourselves feel better 
And that's it. That's just how we're going to deal with that. Um, making an effort to hang out and spend time with real friends, real family that you care about. Um, reaching out and talking about worries to friends and family members. If you don't feel comfortable talking to your friends and family members about what's going on, those are people that you're not probably not going to get comfortable with or they've done something to not make you feel comfortable. Uh, talking out with a professional person or counselor, um, so fi seeking counsel. Um, a lot of people who are in the anxiety, mental health brackets that don't want to be a burden will not go seek help because they feel like nobody will understand, nobody will you know, be able to help them. They don't want to feel like a burden. And a lot of that is dealing with anxiety. That is dealing with a lot of psycho like psychological aspects, a lot of mental aspects. And a lot of people don't realize that when it comes down to your mental health, your mental health is going to do a defense or a coping to deal with the things going on in your life. And a lot of the times how you deal with certain things mm -hmm is how people are going to get through, you know, are you okay? Are you dealing with things accordingly? Um, are you fine? And a lot of people don't see the problems. A lot of people who have these bad or unhealthy coping mechanisms, coping strategies, don't know that they're bad a lot of the times. They don't see that there's a problem with them because it's just natural, it's easy, it's it's the hard ones that people don't talk about the most. It's those being able to get up and write and to, to motivate yourself to, you know, take a shower or to, to cook your favorite food or just watch your favorite movie, even if it's something you've seen a thousand fucking times. Like, people don't realize that like those little things is healthy. Those are healthy. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, maybe if I have sex with my partner, that's going to be healthy. In all actuality, it's a temporary fix for a long-term problem. It's not going to fix the problem between you and that person. And a lot of people in relationships use sex as a, as a coping mechanism to get over arguments or disagreements or tension in relationships and not realizing that it is a coping strategy for both of y'all. And it doesn't really fix it. So talking it out is better. Um, I can tell y'all at 30, 30 years old, I still have a journal. I still have, you know, something that I can write in. I still write poetry. I still sit here and have like these schoolgirl moments of like writing letters to myself or to somebody because sometimes I may not be able to express verbally what I want to say to this person but I'm not going to let it sit there and fester and I'm not going to use um bad coping to deal with it I'm not going to use video games to get over an argument I may have with somebody um in this last little episode I had I'm, I'm not gonna lie I sat here and it I slept that's all I wanted to do. I slept. I had no energy to really do anything. And the little bit of energy I had the last few weeks was to literally get up, take a shower, brush my teeth, you know, practice good hygiene because that was my way of getting myself up. Like I had to tell myself if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to do these things because my depression was this that low and my coping mechanism was sleep. Lay down, don't do shit, just sleep. And I wasn't smoking. I wasn't, I wasn't writing. I wasn't drawing. I wasn't, I was trying to escape um, by finding work um, because I overwork, which is another uh, form of escapism. <laughs> and I was, I was just trying to find something to do. I wasn't taking time to enjoy things or deal with things because I always had something else to do. I had, you know, my job, I had different things, but a lot of people don't realize like working and overworking and trying to be the best at something um, because you're trying to not deal with your own personal stuff is not a good coping strategy. And honestly, if I would have known it sooner and I would have just dealt with the things I was dealing with, I just felt like I didn't have, I didn't have time to take care of myself. I didn't give myself permission to take care of myself and have downtime. I just literally would give myself enough downtime to like 
kind of deal with it enough. Like I imagine I was sitting here and I was putting everything in a jar. Like I'm I'm sitting here and this is my my depression jar. We'll we'll use my my you know truly container right here. So imagine the green fluid here is my depression. So basically what I kept doing is I kept putting more and more shit in here to the point where now at this point the top can't even close down and I can't close shit and it's so filled and basically what I would do is I would scoop a little bit of it out at a time but then I was not scooping out the, equ like the equal amount of what I was taking out didn't add up to what I was putting in. So everything I was putting in was like almost putting like a whole bunch of shit in there and then I was like okay I'm starting to feel a little overwhelmed let me do something to get myself to feel better and then it would be just like scraping the surface but then I'm putting a whole nother big old pile of something inside this jar to the point that it overfilled and I, I wasn't giving myself permission to to do anything or handle anything because I didn't have the means to not be there for everyone else like I had a lot of other people who were going through a lot of shit so I didn't give myself time to do anything I wasn't making myself happy I wasn't doing anything for myself um and honestly it was just bad like I had a lot of shit after a lot of shit and I was just like I cried in the second to make myself feel better but it really didn't solve anything um I ended up losing a grandparent and I didn't properly mourn them I just sat here and I cried about it for a moment and then it wasn't enough to let the hurt go but it was enough for me to keep functioning to the point where I couldn't function no more like I, I finally snapped and it was just like the straw that broke the camel's back and I was just like I was done I was just like you know what it is what it is and I still manage in my depression to sit here and you know try to eat I still tried to do things for myself I tried to go for walks I tried to stay active I tried to work out I got you know three days of me literally on the treadmill just trying to stay active like I'm I'm like I'm trying to get myself out of this funk I don't I don't want to be depressed no more I don't want to just lay down and there was just like I said then they turn around and even with me trying to push through it turn around and went back to what was easiest which was just sleeping and getting up and then when I got up I would eat something or try to eat something which my stomach was not allowing me to eat um and then go and sleep some more and then when I got finished sleeping that time you know try to go take a shower and you know practice some kind of good hygiene because one thing about me in my depression I will always somehow somehow find a way to get up I would literally send a picture of myself of somebody with bed sores and be like you know what I need to get up I need to stretch um I don't want you know bruises to form on my back or on my side so during this depressed episode, I managed to get up and still shower and take, you know, time for myself. And my biggest fear is, like, losing my teeth. So, an mm -hmm. image of, like, me losing my teeth <laughs> would kick in. And then I was just like, I, I don't think I can deal with this. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> so, it was just, it was bad. It was, it was, it was pretty bad. But... A lot of people will easily go towards the bad and unhealthy coping strategies because it's just easier and it's not it really isn't it's 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 a feel good in the moment it's not something that a lot of people realize like it's good for you like with me I stayed with a person that was not healthy or good for me um, only because I needed, like I said, my some of my unhealthy coping mechanisms was having sex, um, video games um, at one point, and then also just sleeping. Um, I don't overeat. I actually still try to like maintain stuff um, when it comes to my eating and everything else like that. But for me, I used to sit here and I used to hang out and fuck around with the dude that only because I had an established relationship with him, I stayed with him 
just for sex because that's what would make me feel good. I don't know if anybody remembers um, or ever seen the scene, the infamous scene with Holly Berry getting fucked by Billy Bob Thornton in Monster Ball where she was like, make me feel good. <laughs> that's me that was me 100% I'm not gonna lie it's a very bad coping mechanism and at least thing one thing about me is I will fuck at least the person that I'm with I won't go out and fuck strangers I won't do nothing I would have sex or with a person that I've had sex with before or had an established relationship with before in order to deal with it I've gotten a lot better over the years um so I don't backtrack a lot but I stayed with somebody who wasn't good for me at all. They were very, very toxic. And I used them for sex to deal with my anger issues or to deal with, you know, my anxiety or depression. But like, I don't want to be depressed no more. Come fuck me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you knew what this was. Um, and, and in a case, that's not healthy. Like, because now you're screwing around with somebody and you can't get away from this person when you want to be away and be by yourself, which again, that's not a healthy, healthy strategy to do as a coping strategy or anything. If you, um, are, that's the reason why I tell people like touch is my, my love language. Like I, I, I can be honestly straight up with you. Like sex is, uh, it's physical touch. It's physical, mental, emotional, um, spiritual, it's it's a lot of stuff, and it can be a very dangerous coping strategy if it's in the wrong hands. That's how some people become nymphos. Some people become a lot of stuff. I am demisexual, yes, but I always tell people it does not mean I don't like sex. I do like sex, but it has to be with the right person. It has to be somebody I'm emotionally involved with because at the end of the day, they will understand that I do use sex as a way of escapism, and it's not healthy. And I have gone years at some point not dealing with people because of distance or them being away or me finally, you know, saying, fuck it, I, I need to get away from this when I'm in my right space and head. But sex can also be a good coping mechanism if it's he healthy and sparingly and you're not too deep in the fucking thick of everything. Honestly, anything could be very good coping mechanism except for, you know, abusing drugs and alcoholism. Those are the only two I would probably say is not a good, um, unhealthy coping mechanism. Social drinking's fine. Social recreational drugs is fine. Because I'm always going to tell you weed is going to be good. Um, and that's the reason why I said, like, with me, I am working on myself. I am doing music therapy. I am doing a lot of stuff. But I also do smoke weed. And weed, for me, helps me have mindful relaxation and meditation and be able to sit down and enjoy the music and it's like when you're high you listen to every piece of music you can break it down you can analyze it and if anybody didn't know I um in high school high school middle school like majority of my life I, I studied music um that was what I wanted to do I wanted to do music my dad was a DJ I loved music. I love musical theater. I love uh, Disney music. If you actually hear me saying like me singing, I don't have like a soul voice. I have more of a Disney slash Nickelodeon voice. I will sing to kids. That's just me. I love kids too. That's sh that's another thing. That's the reason why I don't want to have bad coping mechanisms. I'm human. I am. Um, and the reason why I also mentioned the healthy coping mechanisms and stuff like that, because a lot of stuff that happened with um, Takara, the, the runner, because she technically, she had a lot of healthy coping strategies as well as the quote unquote unhealthy one. She smoked weed, which technically weed is a lot better than, you know, alcoholism. Um, she still was running. She was still staying active. She was still doing physical exercise and she was still coping in a healthy way, but society doesn't see it that way. Like when people see me and they hear me they say, oh, you smoke weed. Oh, you must be a pothead. I was like, some people who are potheads are, yes, they are abusing the drug. They're using it to escape, but some of us are using it for recreational purposes, for anxiety, for depression, for them to be able to have that mindful relaxation, to have that meditation part portion, to be able to, to be able to clear their thoughts long enough to write or to draw or things of that nature. So that's the reason why I will always be an advocate for weed. So it, it is one of those things. But then I also know that there is people in my family who are addicts. So there is a difference. Um, but 
the big thing that I sit here and I try to tell people is you got to know what the difference is of coping strategies is, is like what, if you don't know what your coping strategy is, take a look at your stressful moments. What do you do the moment you get stressed? What is your go-to thing to do when you're stressed? When you are in an awkward situation, when you are in a stressful situation, when you're in an anxiety filled situation, what is your go-to? And that is literally my question for everyone. That's something to reflect on. What is your go-to? Do you escape by continue helping other people versus helping yourself? Because that is another form of bad coping. Me, for a, a hand, I sat here and was looking for people at one point in my younger years to help. So I didn't have to deal with my own stuff. That is also a form of escapism. I was looking for things that wasn't there so I didn't have to deal with my own stuff. Because escapism is, and honestly, a lot of that stuff that is bad coping strategies is just escapism. Um, when you overindulge in drugs, you overindulge in alcohol, you play nothing but video games all day, you're a smoking addict, you're, you do self-harm, you are using it as a form of escapism to avoid dealing with the problem at hand because it's at that moment you feel good and then later you don't feel good because it hasn't really resolved anything. So that's what we talked about today, guys. This is going to be a very short episode because the fact to be in coping strategies and coping mechanisms is not really in depth as much as people think that it is. A lot of people don't realize that if you know the differences between what is healthy and unhealthy, then you can take the time to look at what are you doing during your times of stressful situations? Is it healthy? Is it unhealthy? Do you need to seek guidance? And I always tell people there's nothing wrong with going to seek counsel. Sometimes it's good to go talk to somebody who's not in your close circle and they have a, a, a you know, a bias standpoint or an unbiased standpoint of what's going on in the situation because they don't know. Sometimes, you know, you can't be there for everyone. Sometimes you do have to tell people no and understand and set boundaries and, you know, take time for yourself. Because a lot of the times people don't realize that it could be very, very stressful, that it could be too much for them, that it sometimes it's not... It's not something that they can deal with at that point or at that time. So it's a matter of reflecting in yourself. And sometimes when we see what's in ourselves, we don't like the outcomes. When we sit down and like, what do I do when I'm stressed? And don't realize that some of the stuff that we do ain't even good. So like I said, I have a lot of healthy and unhealthy um, coping strategies. I'm not going to lie. I ain't gonna lie. I wish I had some, hey, I'm perfect because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I will never tell you guys I'm perfect, but I have a lot of very unhealthy and healthy coping strategies. I'm getting better. And I feel like a lot of people need to understand what coping strategies are in order to be able to help and reflect. Not everybody's, you know, go-to is reading, but read something, educate yourself, watch a documentary. Educate yourself, relax, clear your mind of what stuff, but don't use it as a way of escaping the problem, but just, you know, enough so you can be able to sort through the problem yourself. Don't, you know, just go to alcohol because alcohol makes you feel good in the time. And a lot of people commonly go to alcohol after breakups, like because they feel like that's the best thing to do, or they go straight to sex and fucking other people because that's the easier thing to do to deal with a broken heart versus sitting down and actually talking to somebody and actually seeking counsel or anything else like that. And then also seeking counsel from the wrong people can actually make it worse. Um, but it's just, you need to make sure you seek the proper counsel when you're in these stressful or um, not so good situations. Um, so I just tell people, like, know the difference between what your coping mechanisms are when you are stressed. Like, what is your go-to after a stressful day? And are you technically abusing it? Set time for yourself. Gaming and stuff could be one of those ones that you can, if you manage it properly, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad coping mechanism. It could actually be a good one. Um, it's just about, you know, time management and, you know, sorting through things and getting your stuff together when it comes down to it. So my advice to everyone is 
research what different coping mechanisms are out there because what I basically just talked about is the more common ones but there's a lot other uncommon ones that a lot of people don't understand um that they may not realize that it is a coping strategy or coping defense or um coping mechanism and when I come back not this Friday upcoming Friday but the following Friday when we talk about um defense mechanisms which is different we're gonna revisit what is the difference between coping strategies and defensive mechanisms because a lot of people don't realize that there is a difference between the two of those two where you're automatically like if somebody comes to you you instantly just in survival mode so everybody has to go um while coping is just something to help you deal with your stress and it might be something that's temporary it might be something that's permanent it's it's your auto or Un, it's either your auto response, your subconscious or unsubconscious, is your subconscious or unsubconscious response to stress, stressful situations, mental, mental, physical, and emotional. So it's your way of trying to, you know, protect yourself. So from your neighborhood friendly witch, just remember, guys, it is okay to not be okay. Self love is the best love. Self care is the best care. Just remember, if you ever, ever, ever feel like you are getting on a downward spiral of, I need time for myself, but people need me, it is okay to take time for yourself. If anything that I can teach you guys or anything you guys can take from this today, using your ability as a strong friend to take care of other people and be their problem solvers is a form of escapism. It is a unhealthy coping strategy. You are no good to nobody if you are not good to yourself. And I say this, I think maybe once or twice every season because it comes up and it's very relevant for the subject at hand. A lot of people who are strong friends, our biggest coping issue is that we use other people's problem because we're so used to being there for other people as our way of escaping. And sometimes that is not a, that's not a good thing, baby. We have to still take time for ourselves. We still need to, you know, self-love ourselves and all that other stuff. So just remember the differences between healthy and unhealthy coping. Too much of a good thing is a bad thing. Um, and are you using it as a form of escapism or is this something that's going to be long-term beneficial for you? Yes, it may not be instant gratification, but in the long term, is it going to make you look at life differently? A lot of people don't realize that even with physical exercise, staying active, if you are not mentally changing your look on it, it's not going to be a good coping mechanism for you. You're still going to be like, well, I'm still overeating. No, baby, you need to change your mind state. And that's something you have to work on. I'm not telling people it's bad to have that mind state, but most things in our lives is mental and we have to start mentally. Your brain is what wires the rest of your body. And if you don't change how you look at something or take the time to fully digest that, yes, I may be doing something wrong and accepting and then going through the motions to actually change it, you're not going to get out of that that loop. You're going to constantly go back into those those unhealthy coping strategies and you're not going to go through anything. So I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to tangent even more. But that being said, sorry guys, I actually am on a, a time schedule. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a safe and wonderful weekend, safe and wonderful week. Just remember, self-love is the best love, self-care is the best care. And just do your research. Don't let nobody halfway love you. All many good blessings. Protect your energy. Protect your peace. Protect your space. And I will see you guys in like two weeks. I love you guys. I see you guys. You're amazing. Keep being you. Keep pushing and striving to be better versions of yourselves. And if you guys need any resources on coping mechanisms, reach out to me in my social medias. And... I'll send you links to them because I'm always about educating yourself and self-education. That's my way of, um, you know, having a healthy coping strategy is instead of me just sitting here and being upset, I try to educate myself. So with that being said, my loves, I hope you have a safe, wonderful week. If you have any questions, comments, smart remarks, please reach out to me. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And for those who dropped into my stream, thank you so much. I love you. You're amazing. Stay amazing. Mm -hmm. And I see that you're trying to be better. And I'm proud of you. If nobody else tells you that, I'm proud of you. And know that this is from the sincerest part of my heart. So.
see you guys in two weeks. And if you are here for gaming, I'll see you guys later this weekend. Bye.